Hello bookworms, it's Jade from Bedtime Bookworm and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here with the last of my spoilery thoughts on Words of Radiance by Brandon Sanderson. So in today's video, I am sharing my book diary for part five of Words of Radiance, which is the last part of the book. So this video is going to cover the ending of this book, and I am so happy to be sharing this with you guys. I had such a big grin on my face the whole time I was editing this, but also when I was reading it, as you will see from my video clips. Over the last couple of weeks, I've shared my spoilery thoughts on part three and part four. I will link those down below if you miss them, but as a reminder, this video is full of spoilers. So for this video, do not watch it unless you've read Words of Radiance in its entirety. I will also have timestamps down below if you wanna go like chapter by chapter and read along with me. I think that could be a really fun way to experience this video. I definitely read this last chunk in almost one go, I think maybe over a couple of days. I was trying to finish it in time to join the Storm Along 2020 live show that covered the ending of the book and I did make it but I missed like the first hour because I was still reading when the live show started. Obviously I love this book and I love the ending and I can't wait for you guys to see what I thought about it as I was reading. There are a couple of like predictions or things that I said in this video that now looking back on it, I realized I was wrong about, but I left those pieces in the video because they were what I was actually thinking at the time of reading. And you know, sometimes we misunderstand what we read. So please don't correct me in the comment section just because I don't want people who haven't, you know, read Oathbringer or continued on. I don't want them to be spoiled for anything. So please keep any spoilery comments in this video to what we know at the end of Words of Radiance and save your Oathbringer thoughts for when I post my book diaries for Oathbringer. But also know that some of my theories and observations that I say in this video, they might not be right. So just because I say something, don't think that I got it right because there's definitely something that I got wrong. Okay, I think that's probably enough of an intro. Here are my thoughts on the ending of Words of Radiance. I hope you guys enjoy this. Okay, so I just finished the interludes and the last interlude we got was super interesting. It was from, I can never say his name, right? Teravangian. It was from Teravangian's point of view. I didn't know from the little we've seen of him before that he like vacillates. I don't know why I'm saying that word, but he goes back and forth between being like really smart and really stupid and most of the time he's just average intelligence like that was really interesting but at the end of this interlude he talks about how he's trying to unite all the kingdoms and that's why he's taken over Yakoved. and he's saying he's doing this because Gavilar shared his visions with him so I guess Gavilar was also having visions but Dalinar doesn't know that I don't think I don't think Dalinar knows that he's having the same visions that his brother had and this all ties back to Gavilar knowing that a desolation was coming. And then there's all that stuff with like Amaram and Gavilar. Amaram was saying that he was also trying to do what Gavilar wanted, which I think is to bring on a desolation so that they can bring the radiance back. Also, Seth shows up to tell Teravangian that Dalinar has a surge binder and Teravangian is like, oh, so he knows about Yasna. So somehow Teravangian knows that Yasna had surge binding powers. And then his second guess as to who the surge binder was is Shalon. Somehow he like guessed that it was Shalon before Seth mentions that it was a, a male who was fighting him. And that's when he figures out that it's Kaladin, except he doesn't know exactly. He just knows that it's a Bridgman. So that interlude was quite interesting and I definitely think there were some things in there that I don't understand yet, but I probably will on a reread. So I'm gonna keep reading a little bit. I'm very excited because at the end of part four, Shalon and Kaladin met back up with Dalinar and everybody else and they're about to go out on to the Shattered Plains for their little excursion that is probably not going to end very well and I'm very nervous about it. Okay, I just finished chapter 76 and it's the chapter where Dalinar is 
like getting ready to leave. And it's the chapter where he brings Amram over to Kaladin and confronts Amram about what Kaladin said about him. And man, that was such a good scene. I gasped out loud whenever Amram started summoning his shard blade and then Dalinar summons his first and I didn't even know that he had one. And he apparently got it from the Herald and was like pretending to be sick that week so he could bond it. That was crazy. It was not expecting that. I'm so happy that Dalinar finally believes Kaladin. The other thing I forgot to mention earlier is there was a scene a couple chapters ago where Dalinar basically like asks Kaladin if he's a Radiant. He says something like, you're what I've been looking for, aren't you? And Kaladin denies it, which I guess he probably denied it because he, you know, doesn't have Syl right now and like can't actually use his powers. But I thought that he might reveal it at that point, but he did not. And Kaladin's leg is still really hurt. I hope Syl comes back soon. I'm so nervous about how the rest of this is going to go because Dalinar is going to go out onto the plains with everybody, but he has to leave Kaladin behind. That doesn't sound right. How is Kaladin supposed to save the day if he doesn't go? And of course, how does he save the day if he doesn't have Syl? So I just, I don't know what's going to happen next. Um, man, I did read a few things last night that I feel like I should have like messaged you about. What did I read last night? Poor Kaladin. He's so worried about Syl and not having his powers. And I'm worried too, but I'm also, I have faith that they're going to come back. I just don't know when. Um, and I'm also like confused because <laughs> Dalinar is going out into the Shattered Plains. I know there's going to be a major battle because the Parshendi are planning to bring a high storm and everything. But Kaladin is not going with them. So like, and he doesn't have his powers. So like, what? I don't know what's going to happen. Like how is Kaladin going to save the day if he's not even there? <laughs> what the heck? Oh, but what if, what if the high storm comes and Kaladin knows that the high storm came when it wasn't supposed to and he's like oh my god these people need help so then he gets his powers from the storm or something and he flies out there that's gotta be what happens right <laughs> i also think that amram and taravangian and gavilar were all part of this group or have a theory well, and the ghost bloods, how do they tie into it? But, like, there was something earlier about, like, there's a group of people who believe that bringing on a desolation, like, they wanted to bring on a desolation so that they could, like, force the Radiance to, to come or whatever. So I feel like that's what all these people are doing, but they're not all working together to do it, so... I don't know. I'm confused about that, but confused, but also I know it'll be explained later. <laughs> okay, so then he was also talking about Kaladin having a blade, and Seth was like, but he didn't have a shard blade when he was fighting me. And Teravangian says something about, yeah, but he must have an honor blade. What the fuck is an honor blade? And he also talks about like something disappearing from somewhere, and that's how he knows. It's like has to do with the surges, and that's how he knows that Kaladin has an honor blade. And I'm just like, I don't know what the fuck you guys are talking about. What is happening? There's one more thing I wanted to talk about. <clears throat> uh, what was it? Oh, Dalinar. At the end, Dalinar was talking about how holding his new shard blade felt weird and felt bad and he didn't know why and i'm like wait <laughs> one is dalinar's surge binder and two what if sill like transferred herself to dalinar or something i don't know those were some thoughts i had okay <laughs> i know you can't say anything about anything okay so it's the next day i am out of the house right now because I came to pick up some dinner. I'm getting sushi for dinner. I haven't had sushi in so long and I love sushi. Anyways, I just finished chapter 77 on my way over here. 
And the only thing I really want to comment on is that Shalon tells Navani that Yasna was a radiant. And, I mean, I've been dying this whole book for somebody to tell somebody that they're a radiant and have powers. But I kind of didn't like that she did that because it's like it's not her secret to tell. Granted, Shalon thinks that Yasna's dead. And as far as we know, she's dead. But I just don't believe it. Like, she died she died way too quick and fast for that to have been it so i'm fully expecting a yasna reappearance at some point I'm not sure if it'll be in this book and i just i feel weird that shalon gave away yasna's secret like i just don't feel like it was hers to tell so i guess i'm glad that somebody knows that somebody has powers but i kind of wish she hadn't done that Okay, I literally just pulled into a gas station so I could talk to you guys because I just finished another chapter. Shalon tells Dalinar that she is a surge binder, and I was so excited because finally I've been waiting for this to happen, for somebody to tell Dalinar that they had powers, and finally Shalon did it. I was like literally clapping my hands and so giddy and excited that she finally did that. And then they hear from some of the scouts that there's parchment around, and they see the new war form in some Parshmen that have been killed. Or I guess I should say Parshendi. And then Shen shows up and is surrendering himself. And he's in war form. Oh, I'm so nervous about this. I don't know what Shen is going to do. Like, is he fully in control of himself? And will he stay fully in control of himself when things start to happen later? Or is he going to be a problem even though he's turned himself in. But I gasped so loud when they said that it was Shen. I'm excited, but also very nervous. Okay, I just got home, just finished chapter 80, and wow. I didn't think that I could ever feel sorry for Elokar, but he just went to Kaladin basically crying about how he's a terrible king and asking Kaladin for advice and how to be better. And I feel kind of bad for him because he obviously, in some small way at least, wants to be a good king and realizes that he's not. And he admits that he was jealous of Kaladin and that's why he put him in prison. And I don't know, I kind of feel bad for him. But then, of course, whenever Kaladin suggests that maybe he should step down, he gets real defensive and is not happy about that. But yeah, that was interesting. I never thought I would feel sorry for Elokar, but I kind of do. I just finished chapter 81, and that's definitely a bit of an ominous ending to that chapter. Dalinar hears the voice of the Almighty, and he tells Dalinar, I'm sorry that you have to die this way. I'm a little bit scared, but we'll see what happens. Okay, I have moved back to the couch. I finished another chapter, chapter 82, and the way that one ended... I'm so nervous. So Kaladin decided to help save Elokar. Yay. I was happy about that. But Elokar is drunk and he gets stabbed and then he can't walk. He like faints basically. And then Moash shows up with his shard blade and shard plate and another person, Graves, I think. So two people with shard plate and shard blade against Kaladin who is wounded and can't heal himself. And he has to protect Elokar, who is just, like, laying on the ground and can't run and hide. <sighs> I'm so nervous. Okay, next chapter. The good news is, is that Adolin was able to sneak up behind some of the singing Porshendi and kill a bunch of them. But then Dalinar hears and is actually able to talk to the... Oh, this is moving. And is actually able to talk to the voice in the sky. And he tells Dalinar that there's nothing he can do to help. But there were definitely a few things that were really interesting in that conversation. One, he kept calling Dalinar son of honor or child of honor. I think maybe Dalinar is a surge binder or something. <laughs> because he said in another chapter that holding a shard blade felt wrong to him. And in this chapter, I think Adolin also said that he, maybe not so much that the shard blade felt wrong, but that he he doesn't, he's not feeling the thrill anymore. I wonder if that means he's becoming a surge binder. Like maybe Honor Spren are going to find all of them or have already found them and they don't know. But yeah, I really think that something is going on with Dalinar because 
the guy in the sky who is both Spren and God, he said, called him Child of Honor with a capital H. So I feel like that means something. And then we see a little bit from Kaladin's point of view. He is unsuccessful in convincing Moash to not kill the king. And basically, they're about to fight. And I don't know how Kaladin is going to get out of this because he's fighting against two shard bears without any armor or weapons. And he's wounded. That doesn't sound very good to me. Oh my gosh. Kaladin has Selvak and I'm so happy. And she turned into a shard blade. I think that must be the honor blade that Teravangian was talking about, saying that that Kaladin had one. Maybe that is when you have a spren. Like she is part of honor, right? I think. And but she turned into a shard blade. Like that's so cool. And he's like glowing light, and he's gonna be able to fight. Or I guess he doesn't even need to fight Moash and Graves the assassins because I think they just ran away. But Graves also says some really interesting things, saying that the diagram spoke of this. So he must be in or have been hired by Caravangian because that's who made the diagram. Because he also says, we focused on making certain you were separate from Dalinar, not on what our actions might push you to become. And then Kaladin's like, why would they need to separate me from Dalinar? And then he looks outside and he can see the storm that's coming. So... I'm predicting that he's about to fly all the way to Dalinar to help save the day. Oh yeah, and in my last update, I totally forgot to mention that Seth has shown up on the Shattered Plains and Adolin ran into him on accident. And in this next chapter, Adolin just ran up to Dalinar and now Dalinar sees the Assassin in White. And I'm so nervous. I just spent that whole chapter like this. I just read it just with my hand over my mouth. That was so tense. The fight between Dalinar and Seth and then Adolin and Seth. And then Seth basically throws Dalinar up into the sky, expecting him to fall back down and just like be broken from falling from such a height. And instead, Kaladin catches him, which I knew as soon as the book said that he flew into the air and then Seth started like walking away because he thought it was like over. I just knew that Kaladin had been like, flying to come get Dalinar and he caught him and put him on the ground at first I wasn't quite sure I was like wait did Dalinar all of a sudden get like an honor spren and like he's flying down even though he's kind of unconscious I don't know but no it was Kaladin and he saved the day I'm so excited I'm pretty sure they're about to fight Either that or Seth is going to run away again, but I don't think he will. I think they're going to have a fight. But I'm so happy that Kaladin saved the day. So, so happy. Well, it's not over yet. There's still a lot of pages left. We'll see what happens. I just finished chapter 86 where Kaladin and Seth are fighting. And I just love Sanderson's fight scenes. That was a really good fight scene. And the way that it ended was super interesting. So I knew that there was something that had changed between the release of the hardback and the paperback. And this scene, the end of the fight between Kaladin and Seth, is a little bit different depending on what edition you're reading. And it was actually kind of confusing because I was listening to the audiobook while reading and then all of a sudden, like, it didn't match up. But basically, the difference is, is in the original, in the audiobook, Kaladin actually kills Seth. He um, uses his shard blade and severs his spine before Seth falls into the sky. But in the paperback version, Kaladin like pulls back at the last second and doesn't kill him and Seth just falls and presumably dies that way. And Kaladin even says that he didn't kill him. So that's like an interesting difference that Sanderson made. I had been told that there was a specific fight scene that was slightly altered in the paperback version but I didn't know what it was obviously I didn't want any spoilers so that was really interesting to see what the difference was. Also Shalon was successful in going to Irithiru. It was so cute whenever Adolin was like what you too? Like she also is a Knight's Radiant and he asked her you, can you fly too? Referring to Kaladin but she doesn't know that and she's like confused and I, I love that moment that was really funny. Okay I just finished chapter 88 and it's been a minute since I've checked in. So I'll try to remember everything that I want to say. 
because I feel like there were a few like small reveals that I didn't want to immediately react to but just now we found out that Seth is not dead or he did die but he was brought back to life by the guy with the crescent scar on his face which I think is the guy who was chasing Lyft in her interlude she was saying that he's been chasing her for a long time and in this chapter he says to Seth that he is Nin Nalan or Nail Herald of Justice so he's one of the heralds and he gives Seth a new shard blade that's black and then it speaks to him because it's presumably a spren and it says, hello, would you like to destroy some evil today? Which sounds good, destroying evil, but I'm very skeptical that its definition of evil is the same as my definition of evil. Oh, Amaram is trying to break out the other Herald and the ghost bloods try to kill him. So I guess that they're not on the same side, which I originally didn't think they were on the same side, but then I thought that maybe they had the same goal and now, I don't know, they just tried to kill him, and Amaram is, like, stealing the Herald. Oh, Shallan meets Mraes, one of the Ghostbloods, and he has basically figured out who she really is, and he still wants her to be part of the Ghostbloods. But the more important reveal on that part is we finally find out for sure what happened to Shallan's mom, and I was right, Shalon was the one to kill her mom, but I definitely did not guess that she did it in self-defense because basically Shalon's mom found out what she was or figured it out and tried to kill her. And then it's just so sad that Shalon's dad took the blame for that and then it totally like ruined their family and Shalon has so much guilt about it. And that's why she hates Pattern, but also doesn't hate him at the same time because Pattern was her shard blade. <sighs> that's such a sad, sad story. I feel so bad for her. Okay, I've got one more chapter and then an epilogue, I think. So I'll be right back. Uh, <laughs> Adolin just killed Sadius. I did not see that coming. And then he like walked away and got rid of evidence that he was there and pretended like it didn't happen. So he's like not going to own up to doing that. That was crazy. He just shoved a knife into his eyeball. All right, Adolin. <laughs> okay, I read one more chapter. Still haven't read the epilogue, but uh, Dalinar just became a Surge Binder or Knight's Radiant. I guess I don't really know what his power is. So he made an oath to Stormfather and was able to bind him, which sounds so crazy to me. And then the Stormfather calls him a bondsmith, which I don't really know what that means yet. And then him and Shalon and Kaladin are, are talking and they're like, okay, so there's three of us. We have a Windrunner, Kaladin, bondsmith, Dalinar, and Lightweaver, Shalon. And then Renarin steps out and says, Four because he's one too, which earlier Shalon had pointed out that he wasn't wearing his glasses. And in that moment, I thought that maybe he was a surge binder, but I forgot to mention it in my video clip because there was just so many things to mention. So that's really cool that he is now one of them. And then we have Yasna, who everybody thinks is dead. She's got to be another one. And there were 10 different kinds. So we're definitely still missing some. I'm still kind of hoping that Adolin is also one, but I kind of feel like maybe he's not. And, oh, and it says Renarin is a truth watcher, which I obviously don't know what that means, but earlier he was having visions of the future. So maybe he can like see the future. And then Kaladin is going to go back to his hometown to try and save his family. So that's a really interesting plot line to pick up for the next book. All right, epilogue time. Okay, so I'm done. The last chapter was from Wit's point of view, who is also Hoyt, Hoyd, which I don't know much about that, but I know that he is like a reoccurring character in Stormlight Archives, or in the Cosmere, I mean. I just finished my book. Only an hour late. But the good news is, is that Yasna is alive. I knew it. I knew that couldn't be the end of her. I guess she has been in Shadesmar this whole time and she's 
learned things because she said that she talked to the heist bren and stuff and now she's come back to try and help everybody against the void bringers and the desolation and i'm so excited for her to be reunited with the rest of her family and everybody in the next book it was so funny when she reappeared yasna was like oh i need to go what did she say Yasna says, I don't have time for you. A storm is coming, a terrible storm. It will bring the void bringers to already here. That's wit. And then she said, damnation, we need to find Eurythero. And he says, already found. And she hesitated the knights. And wit says, refounded, in part by your apprentice, who I might add is 77% more agreeable than you are. I took a poll. That little exchange made me laugh so hard. Anyways, it's done. I finished. It was so good. I can't wait to read the next one. I am going to read Edge Dancer first, but then I'm going to go into Oathbringer and I'm so very excited and also nervous to learn about Dalinar's backstory because I'm afraid I'm not going to like him as much as I do because I he's one of my favorite characters. I love him. So hope you guys enjoyed this. Bye. All right, guys, there you have it. Those are my thoughts on the ending of Words of Radiance. I love this ending so much. The Sander Lanch was in full swing throughout this whole section. I think some of my favorite scenes from this section definitely included where Kaladin got Syl back and had his blade and then flew out and saved Dalinar by catching him in the sky. I loved that part. And I also really enjoyed, I don't know if enjoyed is the right word, but I am glad that we find out what actually happened to Shallan's mom. Obviously, I wasn't too surprised that Shallan killed her own mom because that was one of my predictions, but I was surprised that it was in self-defense. And all that was so interesting and I think tells us a lot more about Shallan and explains to us a little bit why Shallan is the way she is. Definitely let me know down in the comment section what your favorite scenes from the ending of this book were. I loved making this video so much and I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. And keep an eye out for similar videos to this for Oathbringer and then hopefully also Rhythm of War. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more bookish content. That is all I have for now. Thank you so much for watching and until next time bookworms, keep reading. Bye.